Hi, thank all of you for joining us today. Day two at Automation Fair here in Chicago, Illinois. Rockwell Automation's largest customer event of the year. We get so excited. There's um, customer challenges, driving out to solutions, coming to life. And it's one of our favorite things to do is show customers in a very tangible way what we're working on today and in the future now with, with our innovations booth. So thanks all of you for joining me. I'm Ann Baron Brook. I lead our tech partner program here at Rockwell Animation. And I'm joined by two Rockwell executives, Matthias Bujo and Dan DeYoung. So thank you both. Do you mind introducing yourselves really fast? Hi, I'm Dan DeYoung. I lead product management for our software control segment. Nice to be here. Nice to meet you. Mateus? Mateus Bulio, I lead the production automation business for us. Excellent, well thank you for joining. You know, looking at this world today, I think we all agree, things are becoming more complex, more dynamic, and yet with all this complexity, we want simplicity, right? We don't want it to feel complicated, we want to acknowledge it and then find solutions that feel easy and simple. What are you seeing today, Mateus, in terms of what Rockwell sees as the future of automation? Yeah, that's a, that's a very broad question. Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but if you asked us to summarize, I think we would offer three major groupings of investments in how we see the technology continue to advance. The first is the need for, as you said, the need for simplicity. Yes. You know, these production systems today, if you look at a modern production system and you contrast with a prior generation, the amount of compute, the number of technologies that are involved, they're significantly larger. So, and with that comes the need uh, for automation suppliers to continue to simplify what it takes to consume that. Mm -hmm. The second we would offer would be uh, the need to improve how the life cycle of the asset, yes. you know, the, the equipment as well as the automation asset is managed all the way from design operations and maintenance. You know, so on the design side, for example, taking advantage of modern capabilities like continuous integration, continuous deployment, coll collaboration across multiple stakeholders, yes. cloud engineering, to digital twin and things like that. On the life cycle side, on the maintenance and operations side, just like you saw your IT uh, organizations move from point to point management of assets, technology mm -hmm. assets to bulk deployment, bulk updates, you know, a, much, a much more holistic system Absolutely approach to how holistic. it's managed. Yep. And then the third thing we would, we, would, we would think we think it's important to highlight is the need to continue to support what it takes to manage the risks that yes. come in, in production systems. So they come in many forms. We saw the evolution of functional safety, but things like cybersecurity needs, the, the role that automation plays in supporting companies achieving environmental, social, and governance goals, those are important areas that we see the technology continue to evolve into. Absolutely, you know, I think you highlighted a few <coughs> important facts about kind of what we're seeing in terms of evolution, but one of the things you said that I really connected with was this concept of life cycle, right? This is not a single conversation. This is ongoing and continuous, and we have to you know, process what does that mean in terms of customer challenges on that journey and how they're continuing to move and evolve. And, and speaking of evolution, I think, you know, 50 years ago, when I think of disruption, uh, you know, with the first programmable controller, Dan, and, you know, trying to continue to say, how do we continue to challenge status quo? What do you think the equivalent would be today when I think of ITOT convergence and some of this new frontier we're looking at? Thanks, Ann. I think, you know, at Rockwell, making complex simple is how we innovate. Yeah. It's in our DNA. You know, innovation in control systems is about making inefficient processes more efficient. Today's control systems promise more unification and simplification, but machine and equipment coordination still often relies on challenging integration of disparate systems. Right, yes. We see the need to take unified control to the next level. To, simplify, to simultaneously improve flexibility for manufacturers while enabling OEMs and machine builders to take advantage of the latest intelligent devices. Mm -hmm. The key is nimble, scalable control systems. I like that, nimble. I think that's important when I think about agility and reacting to the market. You know, it, what, what customers are asking for today is not the same as what they're going to ask for tomorrow. And I think that concept of 
how fast can we turn over production and, and react. I, that expectation is now accelerated and, and more, you know, what's today, today, and what's tomorrow, tomorrow. Um, well, that's great to hear. I think, you know, customers want that reaction and they want to be able to say, how do I do that? But sometimes there's some mystery around, um, you know, why I would invest to modernize and what the value would be. So, Mateus, what do you think is some of the biggest values or outcomes that we see in a modern production system? Yeah, so if you if you look at, um, in the past, just to contrast with the, how, how we see it evolving, you walked into a piece of equipment and you saw a system for the discrete piece, a PLC. You saw a system for the motion. You saw a system for safety. You saw a system for the robot. And we, we came to market and we said, no, no, you don't need all of that. We have one platform that's capable of integrating, simplifying all of that. That trend has not stopped. The things like machine learning, artificial mm -hmm. intelligence, vision integration, specific business logic to integrate with their information systems, and many more, they're continuing. So how we see that evolving is that in the past, we engineered that capability for that customer. And we'll continue <coughs> to do that. You see a lot of that uh, this week here on mm -hmm. additional batching, additional safety capability, new geometries in robots and things like that. And that will continue. But what we see going on is, a, is the need for an open, tightly integrated, open ecosystem where the vision can be brought in, the, the, the AI in it. Because these systems today, they think. You know, yes. they're, they're, they can be highly autonomous, and with that comes the need for very diverse side of, set of technologies that you have to be able to accommodate. So this idea of a embedded edge compute that provides that open platform to be seamlessly integrated with the rest of the control is a, is a very important area for Absolutely. us. Absolutely, well you don't have to tell me twice about the value of this ecosystem, right? I, I'm a pro partner advocate being on the partner team, and I'm glad you highlighted that because I think Customers are seeing that here today, right? This is not just a Rockwell journey, it's a Rockwell and partners to help the customer. You also mentioned this transition from automated to autonomous, right? And like, how are things evolving around that space? Do you mind double clicking just a little bit into that shift from automated to yeah, autonomous? Yeah, so we, we see that in many forms. So there is a, 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 not only what the system is designed to produce on a fixed capacity, but as the agility, uh, the need for agility and the need to react to changes and adapt increase, you need the system to be able to do that with very minimal effort. So right. model predictive control, artificial intelligence, the system learning and adjusting on the fly, things like even independent car technology oh, that yeah. don't require mechanical changes for things to adapt uh, are significant contributors uh, to how we enable manufacturers to achieve that level of agility and autonomy in the automation system. You know, I think you're saying a lot of words that felt like buzzwords in the past, like AI, but I think the reality is now it's, it's not a buzzword, we're living that. Um, so yeah. I'm glad to hear that, you know, Rockwell is saying, look, we know that there's some mystery around this, let us talk you through what AI means to Rockwell and, and to you and your production system today. It's in production in many places today. Yeah. So Dan, maybe I'll switch over to you. You know, I asked Mateus, I'll ask you the same question. What do you see in terms of value um, in a modern production system for customers? It's a really good question. And, you know, kind of building on <clears throat> some of the things that Mateus said, you know, people are involved in these processes. And so modern production systems bridge the gap between workers with different skill levels. Yes. A really good example of this is when, um, Someone today can take a textual, that's comfortable with textual programming for an automation systems. And in the past, um, that wasn't easily to transpose over into a graphical language. Well today, you can have a developer working in a textual environment and it's automatically being transposed into a graphical representation of maybe ladder logic or function block. And so, those sorts of abilities allow workers with different skill levels to be able to simultaneously work. Another, another element of this is multi-user collaboration. Mm -hmm. And so multi-user collaboration at its heart requires a version control system. Yes. All of those changes that are going on in order to enable concurrent development have to be managed at a very accurate and effective level. You know, modern 
software-defined design. Say that fast. Modern <laughs> software-defined design uses object-oriented programming, which automatically manages interfaces and dependencies that are critical to the control system. With contemporary system design software, can configure smart objects for data collection throughout the system. <clears throat> All good examples of modern production systems. Absolutely, I heard a few things. <clears throat> One is uh, meeting the workforce of today. And I've heard that as a common theme this week, which is the expectations of employees. It needs to be digital. I need data at my fingertips, right? I have a workforce today that looked different than a workforce five years ago, but we're all in the same environment. So how do we kind of bring everyone to the same level? Um, so I'm happy to hear the workforce element. And then you also talked about this concept of multi, you know, separate all funneling into, you know, visibility and cohesive connectivity. I think cloud is actually a, a modern way we're looking at how sure. to do that. Um, Mateus, what do you see in terms of why uh, industrial suppliers are integrating cloud more into their solutions? Um, it's, it's not very different motivation than what you saw in many other in industries in parallel. So things like being able to access anytime from anywhere, especially now as we have a very distributed workforce mm -hmm. working for all types uh, 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 of different uh, stakeholders in, in distributed locations, that becomes very important. The other piece is security. You oh, know, yeah. you have it always updated, you have it always the latest, you can consume new technology faster and have updates faster that m help you manage your risk. And the last piece is it allows you to scale as you need it. You don't need a significant amount of capital right up front and you can dose uh, the, the type of spend that's needed based on the business profile. So those are just a few of the many reasons why we see uh, increasing interest in uh, the adoption of uh, cloud technologies across manufacturing. Absolutely. It also enables, um, uh, with a cloud environment, you don't need to download the software right. and then install it. And the lifecycle management aspect of a cloud-based system is just always available. Yeah, so. easy. If it's easy, easy, sign me up. I know yeah. that's what folks are looking for. Well, thank you both so much. Um, I appreciate hearing your thoughts. There's two ways customers can learn more. One is if you're at the show, please go explore uh, Rockwell, our solutions, uh, as well as if you're joining us remotely, there's more information. We have a white paper that we're trying to get some eyeballs on um, that talks about a little more depth of how Rockwell's looking at kind of the future of automation. A link to that white paper can be found in the comment section of this video. So thank you again. Thank you both for joining me. I know there's a lot going on this week and thank all of you for watching. Uh, and we hope to see you either on the show floor or learning more on rockautomation.com. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Ann.